Performances of plays were originally held in inns, noblemen's houses, and in some cases, in open fields. The recognition garnered from these performances elevated the desire for more live productions and eventually led to the construction of the original Playhouse in 1576. This was self-titled The Theater, and it was owned by James Burbage. This theater inspired many of its viewers and offered a blueprint for the eminent theaters to come. When the contract for the land rights to the theater's location ended, the landowner, Giles Allen, despised plays and preferred to sell the lumber for profit, but due to a clause in the contract, Burbage was able to keep the materials, and those materials became part of the structure of the First Globe Theater. With the help of a carpenter named Peter Smith, William Shakespeare and several other stakeholders were able to erect a playhouse of their own. The Globe Theater was an open-air, roofless theater with a stage in the middle that had an opening centered on it that allowed actors to enter and exit for certain parts of plays. It had multiple levels of seating. The lower social class seating was on the ground, nicknamed the people who stood there the groundlings, and it cost one penny per person. The middle to upper class seating had two levels of seating, one elevated above the other. The lower of the two cost two pennies, while the one above it cost three. The highest class seating was nothing more than an extension of the stage, fitting them within close proximity of the actors. Women, women that sat in these seats would wear masks to hide their identities from the 3,000 or so viewers in the audience. The profit from the plays was split between the theater's shareholders. The Globe was such a success that it drew people from all over town for more than just the play. Many people actually set up shop to sell merchandise related to the plays and the theater itself, and eventually grew into an entire marketplace. Each play drew such a crowd that the festivities gave off, gave off a holiday-like atmosphere, raising the interest of non-playgoers to join in the excitement. There was an uproar when young apprentices evaded work to be part of the merriment. Plays could not be produced fast enough. With the plays going into production soon after they were written, little room was left for preparation or even walkthroughs of the performance. The actors took on different, different techniques to ensure that the, players, the plays could be performed as hastily as possible. These techniques include cue acting, where the lines were whispered to the actors from someone off to the side of the stage, cue scripting is when the actors were only given the lines for their character. This may have caused confusion during the play, but may have also led to more authentic reactions from the characters from the changes in the story. With only men able to take on roles, including the women's roles, there was a need for actors, which persuaded Shakespeare to take on several roles, even roles of characters from his own plays. The success of the theater continued to grow until playwrights began taking on political and religious ideas. Before the propaganda could elevate any further, Queen Elizabeth set regulations that did not allow anyone to speak of anything religious or political. Actors were required to have some form of identification as well, and all published plays needed a royal patent to be performed. With the success slowly slipping away and the theaters beginning to be used as a brothel and a place to gamble, audiences became so rambunctious that all playhouses were ordered to be located south of the Thames River. The fact that playhouses were used to harbor gambling and prostitution persuaded the Queen's decision even more. The Chamberlain's men continued to use the original theater until 1613, when a cannon misfired the setting the theater ablaze. No one was injured, but it, was, it has been said that a man's pants were set on fire but put out with a bottle of ale, and no one was injured. Another theater was quickly erected a year later. It wasn't until 1642 that plays were banned, and only two years later, the Puritans tore down the theater during the English Civil War. All was forgotten until 1993, when England decided they would construct another theater in remembrance of the original. That theater is alive and well today, and sees many people a year, and will help spread the spirit of Shakespeare for years to come.